Hey, Home Bakers, it's Jack here, Bake with Jack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week is super practical how to shape up a batard. Roll it! Hey you guys and welcome back to the Bake With Jack YouTube channel where I share a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday to help you make amazing bread at home. Woo! If you are new, welcome. You've got about 105 or 6 videos to catch up on. Don't watch the first 10 because they are not the best. Not my best work. Watch it, don't judge me on it. So a batard is the long loaf with slightly rounded, slightly pointed ends if you so wish. Let's cut to the table and show you exactly how it's done. Okay, here's a dough that I've mixed and kneaded. It's been resting for an hour. It's 80% white flour, 20% brown, and it's a 65% hydration. For those of you interested, I'll leave the spec underneath. It's one kilo of flour, and so I'm gonna make four sort of medium-sized batards out of it. I've got my Baker Jack dough scraper and my pot of flour there in case I need it for dusting. The top's nice and floury anyway, so it's gonna come straight out of the bowl as standard onto the table upside down. From here, what I'm gonna do is just push it out to make it easy for myself to be able to cut into four pieces with the flat edge of my scraper like this. I'm not gonna weigh these. You could weigh them if you wanted to. If you really wanted to get them bang on exactly the same, you could weigh them out. We've spoken about that before. But for this purpose of this, I'm just gonna cut it into four pieces, like so. Now that we're here, uh, I'm gonna do a pre-shape. This is the pre-shape we've spoken about in another video yet again, right? Just gonna make it into a nice ball like this. Exactly the same as what we have done in the past, right? Take a piece and fold it over, make it into a ball. So they're all uniform shape. It's much more easier to shape stuff from a nice round ball instead of some weird triangle, whatever it is, when it comes out after you've cut it. So I'm gonna shape these roughly into balls like this. Now, a bit of cupping underneath like this, turning, and cup in just to tighten up, even it off nicely. And now we've got a nice bouncy ball. Number one, I'll pop it up there. And the same with this one, we're degassing slightly. We're getting the tension back. And we're gonna let it rest there before the final shape. We can't shape it now, it's too bouncy. We can't shape it. We have to let it rest up and relax once again. And then we go for the final shape. So I'm gonna leave it here for about 10, 15 minutes, probably close to the 15, I'd imagine. Let it rest up with a bit of flour top. Cover it up again with my cloth. It's gonna sit there and relax, ready for the final shape. Splendid. Okay, let's have a look. Oh yeah, nice. Bit more delicate, bit more spread out, ready for the final shape. So starting with the one that I started with, I release it from the table, my scraper, upside down onto the table. It shouldn't stick, so I shouldn't really need any more flour. Once again, I've stitched myself up with the surface. Let me move this around and we'll resume. There we go, just got a bit of extra space here now to work with. I'm just gonna dust underneath a little bit, make sure it doesn't stick all the time. Now what I'm gonna do here, just push it into that circle, I'm not being particularly forceful with it. And now I'm gonna pick up where there would be two top corners, here and here, like this. And then I'm gonna fold them in like that. This bit then becomes our middle, that comes down, right? And now I'm gonna roll and push and roll and push, exactly like shaping a loaf video, except I'm gonna bring my thumbs inwards and push everything in to get this bulgy bit in the middle. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Like this, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. Squeeze up that seam up into the table, so it's nice. And there we go, now we've got our shape. Now I can give it a little roll like this if I want to, just to make it a bit more uniform, and then with a the seam side underneath, that is our batard ready to go. I'm gonna just dust that up now, all over, and pop it up here, out of the way, up there. Let's go with number two. Upside down onto the surface. Push, 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 push. It's sticky side up now. Always check it's not sticking underneath. Take where there would be two top corners if it was a square and fold them in. This bit comes down. Roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. Squeeze up that seam. And then we got another batard like this. Okay, let's go with the other two. 
It's not this similar to a loaf video, but I don't want those square ends, okay? I want the pointy ends, and to get that, we need to redistribute this mass into the center. Roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. You can roll these really pointy if you want to like this. That's quite nice if you want to do that. Get that artisan look when they get the little bit of a dark color on the ends. That's quite nice, actually, when you get that. Pop that there, give it a good old dust. Pop it there. And the last one, push it down. Top two corners in, fold that middle. Roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. Roll the ends, and there we go. So considering I didn't weigh those out first, they've come out not too bad in the terms of a consistent size, which I'm quite happy with. Whatever you do next, whether you're stone baking, whether you're proving on a tray or baking, that's how you do your lovely batard shape. And there you have it, that's how to shape a batard, and just like the rest of my shaping videos, it's not as simple as you might think. It's not as easy as just rolling stuff up and making the ends point. So you've got to redistribute the dough in a specific way in order to hold that shape until the end. Listen, thanks so much for coming back every single week. If you haven't subscribed yet, have a think about it. Maybe watch a couple more videos and then have a think about it. I look forward to seeing you next week for another bread making tip. See ya. There it is, the classic Batard. Thanks for stopping by this week to watch the Bake With Jack video of the week. The Batard is increasingly becoming one of my most favorite shapes of the moment. Don't forget if there's anything you need, bread making bits and bobs, scrapers and cloths, you can find it at bakewithjack.co.uk forward slash shop. Shipping to you all over the world. I'll see you next week.